Hi everybody, my name is Joey and I'm the Perfect Score Tutor. I've gotten perfect scores on both the SAT and ACT. However, I'm here today with a copy of the 2024 free response questions to the Calculus AB exam. I'll be breaking down the free response questions into detail so you can predict how you did on this exam. Or if you're looking at this from a future test date, you can use this walkthrough to study for your upcoming Calc exam. Question six is our area slash volumes question. So they give us the two graphs of F and G as shown in the graph. So here's F, here's G. And then part A says, let R be the region bounded by the graphs F and G from zero to two as shown in the graph, right? But do not evaluate an integral expression. So that's really nice here because these are pretty simple, right? So you could calculate the integral if you want. So to look at R, I always look at which direction I'm gonna draw my slices, right? So here my slices are vertical. That's because there's a clear like pathway between the top and the bottom. I wouldn't want to do a horizontal slice because I'm hitting the same graph here. There's not, a, there's not a clear distinction between the two graphs. So for vertical slices, we're going to integrate from left bound to right bound of the top curve minus the bottom curve. And here's a little trick for you, right? You don't have to write the equations if you don't need to. They've already defined them for this question. So this can easily be done in a single line. Part B says let S be the region bounded by the graphs of G and the x-axis from two to five as shown in the graph. Region S is the base of a solid. For this solid at each x, the cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a rectangle with its height equal to half its base in region S. Find the volume of the solid. Show the work that leads to your answer. So again, we want vertical slices because we want our slices to be perpendicular to whatever axis we have. So then the base of our solid is basically going to be g of x. Now, if we want to calculate the area of our solid, the area of the solid is just going to be our base times the height. But what does it say about the height? The height is equal to half the base. So it'd be base times another one half of the base. So our area formula in terms of x is just gonna be one half times g of x squared. Now to find the volume then, we're going to integrate, again, since it's vertical slices, it'll be from left to right of the area formula. I'm just gonna put the one half out in front because it's a coefficient, and then I'm just gonna plug in g of x squared dx. Now they want us to find the volume of the solid, so this one we're gonna actually have to do the work here. So let me move this over to the right. So then let's plug it in then. So it's gonna be one half the integral of g of x squared. So it's gonna be x squared minus two x squared dx. So here we gotta to remember to FOIL this out, right? This is not just gonna be x to the fourth times four x squared. It'll be the first term times the outer term. So it'd be minus two x cubed times the inner term. And then the last term. I can combine this. And now I can integrate. Now I'm gonna plug in the top bound and the bottom bound. So for this one, I just cancel out this four over four. That's why I don't have it written down here. And like I said in previous renditions of this video, you don't need to simplify this. I'm too lazy to simplify this without a calculator, so I would just leave it like this for the reader. Part C says, write, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when region S is rotated around the horizontal line y equals 20. So here's our axis of revolution. We're gonna rotate this way. And when we have an axis of revolution, we need to find our radius. So the outer radius is going to be the distance from here to here. And then our inner radius is going to be the distance from here to here. So I'm gonna label this one big R and I'm gonna label this one little r. So big R is just gonna be consistently 20 minus zero, right? The distance between these two things is constantly 20. Now the little radius is going to depend, right? At various points, it's going to be the top, which is 20 minus the curve G of X. So knowing our two radii, 
we can set up our integral then. It's still vertical slices, so the integral is going to be from left bound to right bound of the big radius squared minus the little radius squared. And then do not forget your dx. Now a couple things here. What some students do wrong is they just do 20 minus g of x squared. They all put it into a single square function, so that's something that some students get wrong. Another thing that students might do is you could do g of x minus 20, and that's not necessarily wrong because it would still get you your appropriate value. So if you switch these two around, that wouldn't be a big deal. And then before I forget, I need to include my pi here, right? Because we're doing volumes of revolution. It's always pi r squared. So let's see how your points are earned here. I would probably give this one worth two points, one for your integrand here, and then one for the whole expression for two whole points. For part B, this one has a bunch of stuff in it, right? So I think you'd get one point for this expression, and then they usually give you one point for the constants and the bounds. I think one point you'd get for correctly taking the antiderivative, so making sure that this is your antiderivative, and then you get another point here for getting the correct computation. So this is probably worth four points. And then looking at part C, here's how they normally do it. This would be worth one point for the bigger radius, one point for the little radius, and then one point for your constants and coefficients. So this would be worth three points. Thanks so much for watching this video. If something was unclear or you need me to break down an explanation even more, feel free to leave a question or comment below.